Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. I hope inshallah you are all well and we pray to Allah for, for having a great inshallah session tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah laliyya al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of Islamic plan for life. In this session, we study a very, very important virtue in Islamic ethics. One of the most fundamental ones. And that is about trustworthiness and about keeping our promises. So we discuss these two things which are very much connected with each other. Uh, this lesson starts with a story, a real story from the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Uh, during the battle of Khaybar, Muslim soldiers were very much facing shortage of food and then they saw a person coming with some herd you know with some sheep or goats he was a person who was asked by the inhabitants of the castle who were fighting Muslims to look after their animals he asked the prophet to present Islam to him and he embraced Islam and then he asked whether he can now give these animals sheep and goats to the Muslim army and to the prophet and you know other Muslims to benefit they were facing you know shortage of food it's in a, in a war but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no. In our religion, we don't betray trust. You have to find that person and give him back the animals that has been entrusted to you. Look at this amazing akhlaq of the Prophet which would not allow exceptions even during war as we have in many hadith delivering the trust back to the people who have entrusted this trust with us is necessary and it doesn't make difference they are believers or not believers they are good or bad as we have in our hadith and inshallah we will clarify this more so this story by itself if we really reflect on this I think it's enough but let's see what other discussions you know we have about this issue as we said in the discussion about truthfulness and maybe in different occasions also I have highlighted this that Islamic society and Islamic community is built on some pillars and one of them is mutual trust if there is no trust between members of the society or members of community or members of family life becomes miserable even if people don't do anything bad but just the fact that you cannot trust them and you are all the time worried makes life very difficult let alone if 
you have been betrayed and you know people have harmed you and you have to always guard you have to always watch you are surrounded you know by like thieves or liars or people who have no respect for your honor for your reputation it's what life becomes very very difficult but if there is mutual trust then there would be friendship there would be unity there would be no unnecessary tension there would be no stress and our resources would not be wasted our investments would not be in danger etc so this is a general principle and this is partly achieved through said truthfulness partly achieved through trustworthiness partly achieved through keeping our promises partly achieved through not uh, backbiting or you know accusing falsely etc so we need to make sure that this mutual trust is maintained and uh, indeed it's growing now let's see in a more detailed way what is the concept of trust in Islam and what are the uh, conditions for the people that we entrust something and if there is any condition for the people that we have to give the trust back amanat in Farsi we say amanat in Arabic we say amana or amana but if we mm, bring you know another word after it it becomes amanat for example inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ard wal jibal in any way this amana or trust is something of value it can be a good it can be you know even uh, something a spiritual it can be a secret it can be I don't know a recipe it can be a, you know a reason for for example uh, success that for example a company has you know come with some formula for example that you know I know but I'm working for them and it's amana with me I should not disclose it to other people uh, because they have rights over it in any case anything of value that I have been entrusted with they found me a trustworthy person or I have committed myself to look after their trust and they leave it with me I should make sure that I keep it intact and give it back to them sometimes maybe they allow me also to use sometimes maybe they don't allow me to use it's according to their permission and advice for example maybe someone has a library he asks me to look after this library and he says you can also read these books and benefit you can lend these books to other people or you can let them come and read or no whatever he or she says as the owner someone who has rights over these books I should follow so maybe I can use maybe I cannot use depending on the advice but what is important is I should never ever betray and one type of betrayal is to delay sometimes people think I'm going to give anyway I'm not going to you know claim it's mine but why I should you know give it back quickly even delaying is betrayal if he has given you for one year it should not be one year and one day extra it has to be exactly as you have agreed you were not forced to accept amana but if you have accepted 
then now you have to follow all the agreement that has been made between you and that person Abdullah ibn Sanan went to Imam Sadiq salam after Salat and saw that Imam Sadiq salam is sitting after Salat facing Qibla and is invocating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping not as Salat but as follow-up for Salat so he didn't want to disturb Imam but he had a question also so he decided to ask the question the companions of Imams were very much sure that Imams are always happy to help them with their questions so he said salam to Imam salam, and Imam salam became happy when he saw him and replied to his salam and he said there are people who work for this unjust government for the Khalifa and his you know governors for example and sometimes they come to me and leave some of their amanat with me I know these are bad people I know they don't give homes they don't have faith or piety is it still necessary for me to look after their amanat their trust Imam alayhi salam according to his hadith with his hand pointed at Qibla or to Qibla and said three times by the Lord of Kaaba three times by the Lord of Kaaba by the Lord of Kaaba even if Ibn Muljam who killed my father Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam because you know Imam Sadiq is a progeny of Amir al Mu'minin, so he's a son of Amir al Mu'minin, not immediate son, but you know, this is the way it's also mentioned. If Ibn Muljam, who killed my father Amir al Mu'minin, leaves something with me as amana, entrust me with something, I would give it back to him in the same condition. I would not say it's for Ibn Muljam it doesn't matter if it is damaged for example or I don't give him I give it to some poor people for example as charity no when you accept maybe you, you don't want to accept you don't accept if you think that you cannot look after it you don't accept but if you accept you have responsibility even if it is given by Ibn Muljam So, as long as the person who is entrusting us is concerned, we shouldn't make any distinction. Good people or bad people, we should give their amana back to them. As I have said many times, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was migrating from Mecca to Medina, had many amanat of Quraysh, the people of Mecca, who were fighting Islam, who were torturing Muslims, killing them, you know. But they didn't doubt his amana, and they left something. And Rasulullah also didn't just say, okay, you know, it doesn't matter, now my life is in danger, or Muslim Ummah are in danger, or these people have been killing us. So just, we leave it, for example, in the home, and whoever comes and takes it, it's, you know, fine. Or send a message that you know I am living, you know, for example, and you can go and find it in my home. No. He asked Amir al Mu'minin to deliver this amanat back to their owners and then join him. It's amazing. It's amazing that in the first place, these people, despite all the enmity, they trusted Rasulullah. They didn't think that Rasulullah is going to change their behavior because they have you know, been very bad to him and his people. 
Secondly, it's amazing that Rasulullah accepted to help them in the first place and then he did his best to give them back. Again, despite all the enmity, despite severe dangers which were there. If you are only moral in good days, it's not enough. If I don't tell lies when everything is all right, but when I am under pressure, I tell lies. I keep trust and I'm on a, when it's all right. But if I'm under pressure, if there's war, if there's shortage, you know, no, this is not enough. Islam says you must be moral, you must be trustworthy, you must be loyal, you must be honest, especially in the times of hardship. Actually, that's the main task. Not that it's not important to be moral or you know honest or trustworthy in the good days. That's important, but that's not the test. That's not the challenge. That is not what is expected. What is expected is to show that you are consistent. And this can only be seen when in the times of difficulties and hardship we show our commitment. So this a story of Abdullah ibn Sanan is a very interesting story from Imam Sadr alayhi salam. Now when it comes to me or you choosing someone to leave our valuables with him or her, our amana. This is different. Now, we don't leave our amana with every person. We need to choose reliable people, especially when this amana is something social, something belongs to people, to community, to humanity. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow like for example leadership leadership is a great amana or for example you know we want to marry our children this is amana I have to find someone suitable for them money is very important but if you cannot trust someone with your money how can you trust someone with your daughter for example, or you know, with your community, etc. So, for giving amana to someone, then we have to be selective. For giving amana back, we cannot be selective. We have to give back amana to whoever has given us. But when we want to entrust people, we have to be very selective. Especially these things are highlighted in our hadith. That person should not be a liar. A person who tells lies, how can you trust him? That person should not be a person who is betraying. If someone has betrayed in the past, he may betray again. Number three, it's not a person is not drinking khamr. Someone who drinks khamr, you cannot trust. This person can get drunk and lose control. Don't give your daughter to someone who drinks khamr. Don't give your business to someone who drinks khamr. Don't trust, entrust you know, your values to someone who drinks khamr. This is another thing in the book. And also to the people who are not efficient, not capable Someone who is not able to look after his own <laughs> self or his own money or his own family, then I can not entrust him with mine or with my you know, business or with my you know, community, etc. So we have to be selective, especially when it comes to positions which are great amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whom to choose as a teacher, whom to choose as alim, whom to choose as a community leader, whom to choose as, you know, marja. These are very important. Or when we want to vote, whom to choose as 
member of parliament whom to choose as a I don't know prime minister or president you know different system so we have to be very careful Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man tamana ghayra aminan man tamana ghayra aminan whoever trusts someone who is not trustworthy falaysa lahu ala Allah dhaman la'annahu qad nahahu an ya'ta minhu then he has no right over Allah he should not expect that Allah is going to compensate when that person betrays because Allah has told him not to trust this person by the way this shows and also the next hadith confirms the same thing that if we choose someone carefully and apply all Islamic you know teachings and that person either changes his you know mentality and behavior and betrays or cannot you know fulfill and you know my amana is damaged Allah would compensate he comes to help us although it's not that he told us to do this but when we follow his guidance and then that human being is not able to deliver the task Allah would compensate in the same way that when I become ill Allah would compensate if I have not contributed to illness when I lose something someone my children my family members my friends when I lose them Allah would compensate so hadith says if you trust someone that is not amin is not trustworthy then don't expect from Allah to compensate Imam Baghir is also quoted as saying if you know someone is liar and when he promises he breaks his promises and still you trust him so if he speaks he tells lies not all the time but can tell lies you know he's known to lying telling lies when he promises he keeps he doesn't keep his promise and when he's entrusted he would not you know give trust back he would betray so you know this person has such situation and still you trust him Imam Bagher says that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to let you suffer and not fill the gap or not compensate for you and not reward you <laughs> because you have caused this problem for yourself you have not opened your eyes and actually you saw the problem and you know you closed your eyes <laughs> not that you didn't open your eyes you just closed your eyes you say you know inshallah it will be all right how can you say inshallah it will be all right how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want this to happen to you you are causing this problem to yourself so this confirms that if I act wisely and then for any reason something happens Allah would give me reward Allah would compensate Allah is always on my side but if I was not careful and knew that this person is not you know known to be trustworthy and still I left my things with him or I didn't you know ask at all just jumped this is my problem okay now the next heading is about trustworthiness being a measure for Iman a standard for Iman a criterion to evaluate someone's Iman faith actually our hadith are very clear that if you want to test someone 
don't test them with some actions for example how long is the ruku or sujood la tanzuru ila tul ruku ar rajul wa sujood don't look at someone is when he goes to ruku has long ruku in sujood long sajda although ruku and sujood are very important but these are actions maybe this person is used to this If you want to test someone, اعتبروهم بصدق الحديث وأداء الأمانة Test them with trustworthiness and with telling the truth. These two never become like a habit that you do it unknowingly. Salat, ruku, sujood, fasting, you know, sometimes they become just habits. And people, if they don't do them, they feel bad. They do it habitually. Sometimes. Some people don't always do it with understanding, with reflection, with paying attention to the requirements. When I say, Iyaka na'bud wa Iyaka nasta'een, I mean it, I am committed to the, to the implication. But sometimes it becomes just a habit. But Sidqul Hadith, <laughs> in different circumstances about different issues, sometimes hard, sometimes difficult. And sometimes easy, sometimes, for example, I lose, sometimes I gain. This never becomes something that you do it without understanding. It doesn't become like a habit in that sense. Although you can make a habit of telling the truth, but it's not without understanding. Even if it becomes a habit, it's always with understanding. Or ada or amana the same. So it's a sign of iman in our hadith. In hadith says, whoever betrays amana doesn't have faith and if he or she dies in this condition, he would meet Allah or she would meet Allah while Allah is angry with him or her. There is a hadith that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam was told that Ibn Abi Ya'fur has sent you salam. Imam alayhi salam said, when you meet him, say also my salam to him and tell him, Ja'far ibn Muhammad said. So this is Imam's message for Ibn Abi Ya'fur and for all of us, of course. See how Ali reached the position that he had with Rasulullah. Perhaps it meant that if you want to get close to me, see what Ali had which made him very close to Rasulullah. Imam said, see what made Ali very close and had a high position with Rasulullah and do the same. And then he himself answered to the question. He said, what raised Ali in the eyes of Rasulullah was the fact that he had these two qualities, Sadqul Hadith wa Adaul Amana. No leader wants followers or helpers who tell lie to him or to others doesn't make that much difference don't say you know I don't tell lies to him I tell lies to other people a liar can never you know make sure that he would not tell lies to his master because you don't have that control when you get angry when you are excited <laughs> you may tell lies to your Imam as well and no leader can choose a follower as a helper, as aid, as his right hand, when he betrays Amana. So these two are very important. Now, closely connected to this issue of trustworthiness, we have the issue of Al Wafa Bil Ahd to be loyal to your promises, to keep your promises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ 
ان العهد كان مسؤولا keep your promise be loyal to the covenant to the treaty you make with someone ان العهد كان مسؤولا truly you would be questioned about your promises your bar- your covenants about the treaties that you sign you commit al-mu'minuna inda shurutihim quran also says mu'minin believers are loyal and committed to what conditions they accept and again here whether the person that we have promised we have committed we have signed the contract whether that person is good or bad it doesn't make difference if you don't want to commit you should do it in the first place but when you commit it's no longer the time to think to choose to select unfortunately we sometimes give a promise and then later we realize i cannot deliver this or it's difficult for me whatever you want to do do it before if you want to see whether you have ability you have means you have time etc do it before you commit it's very bad that we promise and then people rely on us and then we don't deliver or they have to come and keep asking and begging you know please you know do you said you know this when you promise do it and don't let them be in need of coming and asking you Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said that the only condition in which you can be exempted is when it leads to committing haram al mu'minun 'inda shurutihim إلا ما أحل حراما أو حرم حلالا. For example, I said I work in this place for you, but now they ask me to do something haram or to compromise about one obligation. Then this is the time that my ahd with Allah, my covenant with Allah, precedes. So I'm not a person who is careless about covenant or what his promises. No, actually I'm very careful, but I have another thing which is more fundamental and has been made before. I have amana of Allah and I have ahad of Allah, both of them. Every person has already a mithaq, a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam alla ta'budu shaytan innahu lakum aduwun mubin wa an i'buduni hadha siratun mustaqim so he has made an ahd with everyone and we are committed to it also he has given amana to us entrusted us my eyes my ears my tongue my stomach my everything that i have is amana i should not use them against his will which is actually against my interest and against interest of humanity because he doesn't need anything when he says something is haram means it's bad for you bad for everyone just you need to see the realities just you need to see a little bit distance don't be short-sighted don't be selfish Certainly anything haram is bad for you and for humanity. About wafa bil ahd or wa'd when there is promise there are some beautiful stories in the book. One is a story that Allama Majlisi in Bihar al-Anwar 
in a chapter about wujub al wafa'i bil wa'de wal ahd necessity of being loyal to your promises and covenants mentions a person says that when i was young and rasulullah was young we used to look after you know some animals taking them as shepherds to feed them so he says one day i told him there is a valley between two mounts and we can take our sheep there and let them you know eat these grasses he said he agreed and we decided to go there tomorrow morning he said when i arrived there i saw he's already there with his animals he didn't delay he was there already but i saw rasulullah as a young person he is not a still rasul he is a, you know a still like ordinary person in the in the eyes of people so he says i saw he is there he has his animals but he has not let the animals start eating so I ask him why you didn't let them you know go and feed themselves he said because we made a promise to come together and do this together i didn't want to precede you i didn't want my animals to eat before your animals come and maybe you know the best ones you know they eat this is the commitment of rasulullah before islam in another hadith, again in the same chapter in Biharul Anwar, Rasulullah had appointment with someone next to a rock and it was hot under sunshine. And Rasulullah was standing there. People told Rasulullah, Rasulullah, why you are standing there? You can come, you know, somewhere in under shadow. Rasulullah said, I have made an appointment with someone to meet him here. And I have to stay here till he comes. Because if I go somewhere else, he may come here and wait for me. He may not find me. Anyway, I have to stay here. We have about Prophet Ismail, Allah Nabi and Awali salam, that he also had an appointment with someone and a, he kept there for some time people you know were looking for him finally they found him people of Mecca and they asked him you know where are you we were looking everywhere for you and he said I have a, an appointment with someone here they said that person is you know not here so they found that person and blamed him so he went to uh, Ismail alayhi salam and apologized and Ismail ala nabiyyina wa alihi salam said that if he was not coming I was going to stay here till day of judgment if I was alive of course because it was a very important thing for Ibrahim, for Ismail and he didn't want to be the one who breaks the promise this is of course for the people who want to become a standards so he says even if maybe from faqih point of view it's not necessary to stay there you know for such a long time but this is for someone that can be a lesson for others can be inspiration for others and this is for someone that Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maryam verse 54 fil kitab Ismail innahu kana al -wa'd. Mention in the book Ismail he was Sadiq al -wa'd. Wa kana rasulan nabiyya So before talking about his Rasala and Nubuwa Allah says he was Sadiq al -wa'd. He was very loyal and committed to his promises 
what are the factors that can help in being trustworthy and in being loyal to our promises and covenants the very first thing is faith iman billah wal yawm al akhir if we believe in god if we put allah at the top of every decision and we know that we have to answer to him on the day of judgment then we will be very careful we would not do anything that would displease him number two if as a requirement of faith or maybe as a your natural quality or as something that you have acquired if you are truthful this would help because not to keep the promise or to betray amana contradicts truthfulness because you have committed and you have to keep your words not to be mean to be ambitious and to be honorable these two are very important and whoever has these two would not do mean things like betraying then there is a discussion about degrees of amanat and promises sometimes for example you know it's a matter of uh, for example i don't know uh, one pound which is of course important even one penny important but it's one pound sometimes it's you know one thousand pounds and one million pound sometimes i told you know someone that you know we go together to have a i don't know cup of coffee which is very important of course you, you keep your promise but sometimes you know i said someone that you know for example i do find for you a house or i do find for you a, for example uh, a scholar for example so there are different issues different levels of priority you know, someone wants to get married i promise to help you know so there can be degrees all of them are important but some become more important not that some are not important all are important but some become more important or the promise if it is made to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made to rasulullah is to imam it becomes more important and of course the utmost imp you know importance is when is the promise between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the covenant between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given this amana of free will and responsibility to all of us. Inna aradna al amana ta'ala samawati wal ard wal jibal fa abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalha al insan innahu kawna zaluman jahula. Surat Ahzab, verse 72. This amana is something that we are all to be 100% careful about. How to make every choice. It has to be responsible. Every word, every decision has to be with full implementation of trustworthiness. And finally, there is a famous story that in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was a couple, Abu Haydar and Umm Salim, or Umm Sulaim, both of them can be. They had a son who was ill, and the son passed away. The mother. Of course, as a mother, you know, it's very difficult. But she was concerned about her husband and knew that her husband would be very, you know, much in pain if he comes to know all of a sudden that their ill son has died. So when the husband arrived, she didn't say anything about death of the son husband of course as and she said she is in a good place or in good hands assured him that there is nothing to worry and had prepared you know good food and you know made everything nice the next day 
she said to him that if there is an amana and the person who has entrusted that amana asked to give back and I give back do you worry do you mind he said no of course if there is amana you have to give back then she said Allah had given us this son as amana and he himself has taken him back and this man when so his wife the mother is so patient said I must be more patient as a man so he took it with patience and he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and reported this to Rasulullah and Rasulullah prayed for both of them and for their progeny so this lady had this much of understanding and what helped her and can help all of us is this concept of amana trustworthiness if anything we are given is taken back we should not think that this is mine and someone is taken away from me this was Allah's amana and now is taken away I am of course sad but this is not end of dunya end of life for me and in a sense I am also happy that so far up to now I was responsible now this responsibility is over alhamdulillah up to now I did my job one of uh, people in Tehran I read the story many years ago that one of ulama of Tehran said this that he had a son who was married and was ill and he was very much concerned he was you know spending time in the hospital on visiting him you know praying he was very very concerned unfortunately he died he has now family children orphans he died but then they saw this man now was you know much more you know tranquil those worries when he, that person was still alive and ill are not there so but they were surprised they asked him you know what happened he said when he was ill I felt I have responsibility I should do my best to look after him to make sure that you know he would be healed if there is any chance but now he has passed away and up to now he was looking after his family and children from now Allah is looking after them why I should be worried I will do whatever I can this is the mentality that we need to reflect on you do your best but if for any reason that amana is taken away maybe you feel sad maybe you feel that that was something useful for good reasons but it's taken away now say alhamdulillah at least up to this time i looked after this amana and from this time on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would look after it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken what he really what belonged to him so as you see this concept of trustworthiness is very far-reaching concept and it can help us a lot in personal life in you know, social life we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in us all virtues those that we have we ask Allah to keep and grow those we lack we ask Allah to grant them and help us appreciate and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our community a community which would be known by everyone as trustworthy
community, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.